welcome back aboard our Pacific Seacraft Orion 27 Soteria. It's in the middle of summer on a hot day. There's some sprinkles around, so we're inside, and what better topic than ice boxes and refrigeration? This will be a two part series. The first of which, this one, will be about uh, improving this ice box back to more or less its original condition, 1979. Going beyond that, we'll be installing some insulation and then organizing the five cubic feet of volume here with some shelving and boxes. Then, I'll be going through the decision tree process about whether or not refrigeration is an appropriate thing, and uh, given its cost. Uh, and then we'll go into uh, figuring out sizing what size refrigeration system, and then finally picking a unit. So we'll go through all that process in this episode. The second part of this series will be installing an isotherm 3251 refrigeration system with a heat exchanger, which is a through hole, and then the cold plate with an intelligent control system. Really slick little unit. We'll go through all that install on the next video, but for now, let's get started on restoring this ice box. All right, to begin the install, the first thing I wanted to do was repair the countertop at the ice box. This is what it looked like after I finished repairing it and what it would ordinarily look like on most Orions. However, the previous owner did this. And the reason why is because he wanted to install a refrigerator but went the easy route and just dropped in a cooler type of refrigerator like you see here. And uh, the cutaways allow heat to escape and also uh, allow him to get the thing out when he needed to. Now to replace the cutout that was on the forward part of the ice box, I had to build up with a couple pieces of plywood uh, that missing section. I uh, held these in place uh, with epoxy and then covered it with uh, polyester resin. Next, um, I s came in with a polyester structural repair putty smooth that down then finally came back with a gel coat that I had a color match and uh, kudos to uh, Boatworks and Andy Miller for giving us an idea of how to color match and that came out quite well and then I had to come back through with uh, progressively finer grades of sandpaper out to uh, 1800 and then finally uh, some polish uh, to finish off the job. I wanted to insulate under the countertop and to do that to do that I glued uh, three quarter inch thick squares of plywood that were uh, sealed with epoxy and then with epoxy I glued them under the countertop these will be standoffs and fastening points to attach quarter inch HDPE plastic sheets or boards the shape under the countertops are irregular so I made cardboard templates to get the shape right and then I cut the HDPE boards but before that installing them um, I sprayed foam insulation uh, between the boards under the countertop and then uh, I attached the boards and sealed all the joints with a Loctite marine sealant although there's just one inch of insulation under the countertop it's better than what was there before which was zero and I'll follow the lead from Carolyn of Boater's Galley and uh, I'll throw a blanket or two over it when uh, it's not in use, particularly in warm tropical places. Now the previous owner also installed a um, bare wooden plywood platform near the bottom of the ice box, about six inches off the bottom I think. Uh, now I could gain more icebox volume uh, by removing that plywood and I'm not sure what I'll, kind of extra work I'm going to be getting into that if he epoxied it in place. Anyway, rather than to attempt to remove that by, uh, plywood, I sanded it and I sealed it with uh, epoxy and then I glued a piece of quarter inch thick uh, HDPE plastic on top of it and then I sealed that. So now, although the icebox drain is covered, there is some water in there, I'll sponge it out. Back when it was an icebox, I can understand it needing a drain. Before ordering a fridge, I considered whether it would be worth the cost, uh, somewhere near a thousand bucks for a basic system. Yeah, living on a boat without one, though, isn't fun, given that ice only lasts about a day or so in the summer. And we were often fetching ice or trying to find a place to get it and things typically got wet in the fridge when it melted. 
Now, we could just eat foods that didn't need refrigeration, and even if you have a fridge, you should store some foods like that in case your fridge goes south. Most of the time we had no ice, so we had that experience, but I think whether or not to get a fridge is really a quality of life choice, tempered by money. Another big consideration is power. Given that we have multiple days to month-long trips in mind, we also need to aim for a very efficient low power needing system to work off from our solar array. Okay, we decided to get a fridge, but which one? We don't have the space for a side door access style fridge like you see there in the upper left. So we'll stick with our dumpster style diving ice box. Given our low power co requirement and little space, there are many benefits with systems using a cold plate rather than a simple evaporator and a through hole heat exchanger approach versus a typical fan with cooling fins as shown in the lower left. The cold plate helps carry thermal inertia and it'll super cool before you leave shore power and the through hole cooler is much better at dissipating heat from a compressor than a fan and fins would be in what's likely to be a closed hot environment under the galley sink in my case. Oh hi! <laughs> Funny seeing you in here. You're under the galley sink. All that said, such a system Cold plate and through hole cooler pretty much describes an isotherm 3251, and that system's on the high end of cost. The system is based on a Dan Fossey comp refrigeration system. It has intelligent compressor control running at different modes, whether you're connected to shore power or on a battery, and it has a low power mode and a low voltage cutoff to protect your batteries from excessive drawdown. Now as to what size refrigeration system to get, I considered the volume of the ice box, the amount and quality of insulation in the walls, although that's pretty much an unknown, and then how cold I'd like to have the fridge, and then finally how much power is available. And that's just a short list of things to think about. There is a good bit of arm waving in all this. I don't know much about the ice box insulation other than what's shown here in the sales brochure for a later Orion. I estimate my icebox volume is about 4.4 cubic feet. That exceeds the 3.5 volume that Isotherm says the 3251 will cool down to 42 Fahrenheit. Now the average uh, power consumption by the 3251 is 0.4 amps. The next size larger model, the 3751, which can cool 7 cubic feet, uses just 0.1 amp more, in other words 0.5 amps. Now if that system cools 60% more volume for just 25% more power, that might be a way to go. But for me, a larger coal plate and the higher cost are factors uh, that made me decide to go with the 3251. I'll sacrifice some cooling. Maybe I'll cool down to only 50 Fahrenheit and if the system still can't do that, I can try reducing volume of the styrofoam. And all else fails, I could switch out cold plates because the compressor is the same. Now, although the average amps used is lower for the 3251, I don't know if there's really much power saving in the long run since the compressor is the same. The key factors are probably the icebox volume and the amount and quality of insulation. Okay, one more thing here to close out this video. That's organization of this icebox volume. Last season, the volume underneath here was totally open and not organized. And it quickly came to be dumpster diving. I bought these three boxes, more or less take up the top layer of space. I will see if this works, but that's the plan for now. So in the lower layer of this ice box, I have these quarter inch HDP panels that's easily removable to get to things down below. And you'll see here, the bottom of the ice box has this perimeter of quarter inch HDPE plastic. And it's held in place by this U-channel with uh, some tabs that I've welded on which uh, screwed into this removable wall. Um, same thing for this middle partition. Right now it's set up for equal spacing, uh, but I may change that, maybe not. 
But anyway, the thing is here that all this stuff is removable so I can clean it. And if I have to, I could easily remove this and resize it to a different size um, as far as spacing goes. Now, uh, this partition here is uh, separating the refrigerated items from the cold plate itself. It's about maybe four inches of space here. It also allows me to store tall items, but uh, the key reason why I made it was because this cold plate will get down to 14 Fahrenheit during super cooling. And uh, that'll freeze a lot of free sensitive things. I wanted to avoid that. So that's why basically I have this partition in here. Well, one more thing regarding insulation. Down here is my remote temperature sensor. That's next to the cold plate. And that's reading 48 degrees. The thermistor is reading 50 and that's at the upper end of the the box right about where my finger is pointing. So it's indicator that there's pretty good insulation in this unit. Okay, that's a wrap on this first part of a two-part series on ice boxes and refrigeration. We're ready now to install the Isotherm 3251 that will be covered in this next video coming up. Join us for that. In the meantime, good luck on your projects and I'll see you next time.